What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through this 14-game baseball slate. It's a monster. Uh, it's a big. It's a big day. I like that they they make. These are the days where I like when they make the tournaments. The three thirty three for hundred k for first, so I can play more entries and let's go. Like you know what I mean? Like, cause you, you, Wait, you hold on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Before you before you do anything. Yep. Okay. Did you did you did you post anything on State Kings yet? I did. I, I let's see. I, I yeah. I posted a couple things out there. Uh, how many? How many are you playing uh, in the uh, three thirty three? I'm only actually going to play probably four, and then a couple in the FanDuel one. But I still okay. like how to, it's better to have four in the big shot tournament than, than to have two, right? You know what I mean? And when you have baseball with such high variance, although last night, you know, it was basically the chalk that won everything, um, which is pretty crazy. But it's Dude, what, what, I mean, it's sold, it's what I mean, it's sold out. There's 44 cents left. <laughs> there you go. There's the, but buy, buy 24 cents of it. <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's right. All right. right. <laughs> yeah, the Kobe. Um, all right, but we should, we should, we'll get into this late cause it's a big one and it should be a fun one. I didn't have a great night last night. It's, you know, always trying to find ways to find the pivots off of the right thing. And last night, literally the exact chalk hit basically, um, it was Anola and Scherzer as the, on the winning lineup in the big buy-ins. And it was the San Diego five man stack with the KC mini stack. Like, okay. That's just what gonna, what's going to happen sometimes. Um, with that said, let's, let's, you ready to get into it? I am. Okay. So we're starting off, uh, Starting off with Seattle, Washington, with has got some weather concerns. I will update the weather along the way. Um, this is a and I am sure and I am sharing my screen now. By the way, yeah, okay. this is something I just wanted to touch on for the rest of the season. I think that like we we, we sort of we've got to treat Josiah Gray like like Hunter Green or something like that. I mean, he's the ridiculous strikeout upside. Uh, he he just he he has a huge ceiling and an extremely low floor. He can get absolutely crushed around uh he's a guy we're going to be stacking and playing and playing uh quite a bit until he sort of figures out his pitches he's got great talent he's a former dodger top prospect obviously part of the trey turner the the key part of, or he and the catcher are the key part of the trey turner trade um i i think that this is a guy in the future i will look at 8700 is a little bit much for me on this slate and the weather concerns on top of it so i'm i'm probably going to stay mostly off this game but you could talk me into either stack how do you feel about it um yeah, I, I'm not getting to either of the pitchers here. Um, and I, I get it about the Josiah Gray. Maybe on another slate, I'll take a shot. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I might be interested somewhat in the Washington, except for the fact that, again, you don't really want to attack Chris Flexen. Um, so I'm probably just going to be off the game. <laughs> All yeah. that's a long way of saying probably going to be off the game. I was thinking of, of, of taking, taking a shot maybe in Washington, but weather concerns plus Chris Flexen just is very frustrating to try to to take hitters against. Probably going to end up passing. Yeah, I, I could definitely see either one. I mean, they're they're on the long the long list for me. They're not on the short list for me. But both teams, I could see an argument, and you've got some cheap pieces like Santana and whatever uh, coming off a two home run game. Sometimes when these guys go to a new team, they get rejuvenated. Um, and Juan Soto is obviously always a strong play, but I don't think it's the game we need to focus on, but it's one I might circle back to later today. Um, all right. Well, I think you have, uh, like, as you were, as we were talking about pre-show, you've probably got the, one of the bigger favorites you'll, you'll usually see in baseball as a minus 329 favorite for the Yankees. I actually think it could be even higher here. Uh, I like the Yankees and I like Cole Sheets. I don't know, uh, what else to say other than that. <laughs> well, okay. So let's, let's, let's get into it. So. This is a slate like last night where the, you know, the favorite stack is going to be San Diego and Coors, right? So you're looking for, for pivots off of it or complementary stacks to it and things like that. And I, I think that the Yankees are certainly in the mix um, uh, with, honestly, I have a couple of teams um, and depending how ownership comes in, will determine which way I go. I don't, I mean, I don't see the Yankees being that popular only because is so many, such so many teams on the slate. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and if San Diego is going to get a chunk and the rest is going to be spread a little bit, I mean, I think that the Yankees are going to be, I think they're going to be owned for sure. Um, the only thing that might not keep them owned is because uh, you mentioned there might be weather concerns. Um, so we definitely have to keep an eye on that. Just, but Yeah, it's slight weather concerns. And we're going to, we need a Mrs. Sheets update or something. We do. We, yeah. we definitely need that. Um, uh, but with respect to Cole, I... See, on my on projections, I have him just light years the best option. Um, um, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I guess I'll just leave it at that for now. I mean, there are guys that I can play. You know what I mean? Um, and we'll get to them. But I, I have him just so far above the rest right now. I mean, it's just, you know, he has incredible, you know, he's credible DFS upside and he's against the team that uh, can, 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 can be bad. <laughs> right. um, so, yeah, uh, I, I like Cole uh, in cash. I probably like Cole in GPPs. And I like the Yankees in probably all four minutes. Yep, that's exactly where I'm at. I think the Yankees are going to be a stack that I definitely prioritize uh, outside of Coors. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, Philly and Toronto. I think this is another one where I am going to be, we don't know what's happening exactly. I'm I'm getting mixed reports of who's starting and who's not. I think it's going to be Berrios. I think that's we just got that confirmed. That's what I got, yeah. Yeah, um, I I like... uh, I think, I, I think I'm going to be high on the Blue Jays here as well. Um, they're the other stack, you know, outside the Yankees that I'll take a shot. And you're going to have like a, a bullpen game, maybe not as much fun to stack against. So maybe it's more of a mini stack. But I like the Blue Jays at home in general. Uh, the, the price for Vlad is just way too cheap. And same thing with Springer, I could say. I, I think when these guys are below 5K, you kind of want to pounce on it. But the other prices are a little bit getting up there. I think I like it more as a mini stack, but I definitely am going to have interest in Toronto today. Um. Do you have any, um, I, um, again, when we get past Cole, then we have a lot of different ways you can go pitching wise. Do you have any interest in Barrios or not really? Um, I'm, I, I have him on my list, but I don't have like, a, okay. I don't have a strong, I do like Barrios. Okay. Philadelphia can be kind of frustrating to take pictures against sometimes because they're kind of pesky um, and Barrios can sometimes lose control. I mean, I, I'm, I'm interested to see when we find out later who the umpire is in the game. And, uh, but, but I have some interest in him. I just don't think it's, I'm not like excited about it. Right I only now. ask because I mean, you, you tend to like him more than, 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 than most people. So I figured I would, um, yeah, I would just throw him at. And he's had like, again, this, this, this year was threatening to be the, uh, the return of the Jose Barrios year. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, always, always when he's on the slate, um, and you're looking for a low owned or second pitcher, I always like kind of want to mm-hmm. throw him in there. Okay. Um, you want to move on to Cleveland, uh, Chicago? Yeah, let's talk about Cleveland, Chicago. Um, what are you doing here? So um, Dylan Cease is the freaking nuts. I mean, like he's, he, he's awesome. I mean, I, 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 I'm not looking at projections here and, and I, I, I see Cole well above everybody else, but I just feel as though Cease just always smashes. Um, so I, I definitely, have a, a have an interest in cease um either to somehow try to pair with Cole God help me um or I don't know if I'm not hundred percent Cole I I I think that cease is clearly the next the next guy um as far as just kind of a raw points and raw, raw upside goes um Plinkington um I didn't really Plinkington? I mean that's the weird thing the, the, their first game of the double header so I'm getting I always have oh. I get mixed I get mixed starters. If, I mean, I've got one that says Pilkington. I got one that says Bieber, which Bieber's supposed to start the first game, I believe. So just double check back. I think we have to double check back later because, I mean, if Bieber's pitching, I think he's the second best pitcher on the slate. I didn't have him at all. I, I have Plinkington, Pilkington pitching. That's why. Yeah. But I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, so assuming Pilkington, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. And so I, um, and then, then I, I'm not really going to get to much of the, of the hitting, I don't think. So for me, Cease, uh, Cease another smash, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 the problem I have with Cease is this is the lowest strikeout team in the major leagues. Now, some, but something has to give because you have a guy who's the best strikeout pitcher in baseball basically this year. Um, pitches a hundred, and he has a hundred pitches a game. Like, yeah, but it's uh, so, 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 yeah, again, something's got to give. The, I just keep watching these, these Cleveland, this Cleveland team, they just don't strike out. Um, so as of right now, though, I still have Cease pretty high on my list. Uh, just I, I will bet that he can find find a few strikeouts in there. And uh, I, I don't know. Maybe we should be considering some White Sox here. Just this is a team that, that that's made us a lot. It made a lot of money over the years yeah. off of lefties. Um, specifically, you've got Tim Anderson, Andrew Vaughn now in the lineup, Robert Abreu, Jimenez. All of these guys can hit lefties as well as Pollock down at the bottom. Um, I think this is an interesting stack if it is Pilkington, in fact. Um, it is a doubleheader, and we don't know how the lineup's going to shake out either, so keep that in mind. But uh, it's not it's not as, as good a hitting weather as it's been lately, but I, I still think this is a, a spot we, that I definitely have some interest in the White Sox, at least as a mini stack. So in this next game, Sale against uh, against Kluber, this is um, 
this is a, a more interesting game than 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 a DFS game. Um, I think it's interesting to see what how Sale's going to do coming back. Um, they say he's going to be limited to 85 pitches. I mean, to me, he's not playable DFS wise. Yeah. Um, for a lot of reasons. Um, at 85 pitches, though, at 8400, if he does throw that many, don't you think that makes it like that's pretty reasonable? I feel like. I don't know, man. Sale, every time I see him pitch, he takes him 85 pitches. He gets through the third inning. You know what I mean? Like he just I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Uh, I, I, I think, I don't know. I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I got, I got a piece of me that wants to put, take Tampa in here. I mean, every time I try to play sale, like he's, I just, I just regret it, you know? Yeah, I got you. Um, so part of me wants to play Tampa. If you want to know the truth. Um, and then also, I don't know if, if Part of me wants to play Boston also, but probably, I guess not. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to end up just, just, just staying away from this game. That's what, probably what I do, too. I, I do think that Boston is an interesting play. It's a back-to-back matchup against Kluber. Uh, Kluber was really good in the last one. And going with my normal theory, that my, my general thinking, that it's almost every time it feels like the pitcher has the opposite outing the next time against the same team. Um, yeah, I guess you can make an argument for Boston. I think you can make an argument for Kluber if you wanted to be pesky, but I, I just think you probably are skipping through this game for the most part. If it was in Boston, I might have a little more interest in, in the Red Sox, but uh, not as much interest in Tropicana. So, Dude, Spencer effing Strider, look at him. It, it, it's the kind of guy who, if you're playing multiple lineups and you don't play him, I think look you're making at, a terrible Look mistake. at this against, against the St. Louis who never strikes out. He puts a freaking 12 strikeouts in six innings like it was nothing. Putting back to back 35 point fantasy uh points on the board. I yeah. mean, I don't want to hear it about the Mets this, the Mets that. They don't strike out the new strike. The guy throws at 100. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Like, he's, he's just got to be in play every game, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think this is a great spot. And I'm, I'm you know, six and a half K prop just beneath the, the coal at seven and a half. I just want to double check what Caesars is because I haven't seen C's less than seven and a half all year. They, they don't even have one for C's right now, which is kind of interesting, but I think Strider is the, uh, is your other, your other elite guy. And I think that if you're playing multiple lineups, you have to play him. I don't think you have to play him if you're playing one lineup, but I am going to be high on Strider today. How, how awesome is it though, that he was 8,200, 8,300 and they own a 15 game slate. He's 9,800 against one of the best teams in the national league. You know, it's a, uh, yeah. And uh, hey, I hope we hope they keep his ownership down because I'm in there. You know I can't buy the early ownership projections on him. I'm just not buying it. Um, there's way too much upside. We've just seen it. Like there's no. Well, but, but what are you what are you gonna do? I mean, you, you gotta. You, he has to. I mean, against Cole and, and Cease in the same range. I mean, I think it's gonna be tough to play strike. I don't. I don't think. So by the end of the day, when you take the lowest strikeout team in baseball in Cleveland and the Mets, I mean, with a lower run total even than Cleveland or the same run total as Cleveland, it just feels like I don't know. I, I personally probably am gonna gonna be playing some of this, uh, playing a lot of the Strider. If if he's not owned, I'll be playing a ton of him. Um, but I think that there's no way that happens. I just think that everybody's too good these days and they'll catch on to the fact that I also, I also do think that, that of uh, all these teams to go against these guys, I, I do, I do like the Mets um, uh, over those others. You know what I mean? Like if you were going to play like somebody against one of these high strikeout pitchers, yeah. like, I, don't, I, I don't want to mess with Cincinnati if you want to know the truth. Um, and, 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 and I guess Cleveland, who do you like more Cleveland or the Mets? Like if you had to go against those, if I had to go with one, I probably would go Cleveland, but it's close okay. for me. It's okay. pretty close. Um, it's pretty. Also, I should double check the hitting weather in Atlanta. It's been amazing lately, and not quite as 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 hot today. Only eighty three instead of ninety six, and a little wind blowing in from right center. So, not. I, I think I'd go Cleveland. But I. Uh, but we don't have to do that, fortunately. And and uh, I, you know the unowned stack that that could win you all all the money. Even though I I kind of like David Peterson in general as a pitcher, uh, I think that you could definitely get away with uh, going for Atlanta here. And the problem is they're they're so pr- they're so pricey. But at the same time, no one's going to play them because they're so pricey. And I I, I think that they're a, they're a, they're a large large field tournament play. I don't think that they are anything more than that. But I do think that they that they're a good one and uh, a one-off for Acuna or something like that certainly makes some sense even on a big slate um all right you ready to talk about Milwaukee and Minnesota yeah um I don't I don't I don't know much about these pitchers but um probably not going to play them but but um I do I do have I, I'm showing up with Minnesota as as uh, as a stack to possibly uh uh to play 
it's so weird. Whenever whenever I play against Milwaukee, though, I, I just feel as though I'm up against Josh Hader, even though I'm not. You know what I mean? I just I just always feel as though that I can't ever really kill him because of the mm-hmm. bullpen. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, again, you're looking for something low owned. I think Minnesota they're 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 not going to be as highly owned as some of the other pivots. So I don't know. I think I think Minnesota is pretty reasonable. Um, any of these pitchers? Anything else in this game? Um. I don't know what to do with this game. <laughs> I, I'm stuck on this one a little bit. I, I do think Minnesota makes some, some basic sense. You know what I mean? You've got some strikeout guys that you take a non-strikeout pitcher against them. Um, I, I do have respect for the bullpen. They are expensive. Uh, they're on a, a, lo- a lower tier for me than the Yankees and, and Toronto, but they're definitely, I, I wouldn't fault you for playing them. I just probably am not going to do it. And I'm also going to, uh, probably uh skip on milwaukee too and I, th- I think they're both viable i just don't think that they're my favorites um and i'm trying to make this slate a little smaller as i try to do often and so i'm just not getting to as much of it uh but i but i but i mean this is this is one of those games that you could have both sides uh definitely could could go off against these starters i don't think there's anything special about either of these guys so i wouldn't mind it but i'm not doing it as of right now um all right Dodgers Cardinals. I mean, for me, I think the Dodgers are a perfectly reasonable pivot um, as they always are. I have, I have them actually rated the same as the Yankees. Um, so there's that. Uh, and uh, Mitch White, I just don't think this is the slate for it. Um, I think if it was a smaller slate, I might take a shot, but again, it was just not, I don't know. I just think they're better, they're better options. For him. So I, I do like the Dodgers. Uh, I didn't quite get to St. Louis at all. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's the exact picture that we've talked about over and over. Oh and no, over. he's another one of these guys. Because these junky lefties and they're not throw, you know, I don't know. It just, uh, but a not own Dodger stack in 87 degree weather when they're used to playing in like 70 degree weather. Uh, it's kind of interesting to me. So. I uh, I will have some the, some of the Dodgers, but I have the Yankees in Toronto above them as of right now, um, and it's it's interesting because you you know the, the Dodgers like usually I'd say oh well if they're going to be you know you play the lefties against the lefty and we'll see what it's you, you're going to have some p- pinch hit risk with Tris Trace Thompson Hanser Alber- Hanser Alberto if you're going to try and find a cheap spot in the order, but like Justin Turner and Will Smith are very reasonable and they're you know historically good against lefties. Um, but then you have to, to play Mookie and Trey. It's just expensive. I don't know. So I, I, have, I have interest in the Dodgers, but I don't think this is like a, an automatic spot. And I agree with you what you said about Mitch White. Um, uh, St. Louis has started to struggle a little bit offensively. So I, I'm, um, I, I'm still not going to play Mitch White today, but I, I don't think there, I think there certainly are worse plays on the slate than that. Let's see um, any wind in Wrigley. Yeah, we have 10 miles out to right center. And it and yet Dude, the total is, is still low. This, this game is the nuts then. This that, is what this is, this is what my first build was yeah. of, of, of anything last night when I was looking yeah. and I didn't even know about the win. Yeah, uh, this game's gotta be the nuts, right? I mean, this, this is the nut pivot. It has to be, right? I'm in, I'm in sheets. I, I'm totally in on this game. Um, I'm su- I, I'm surprised that the early projections have like no ownership on this game. I want all kinds of pieces from this, and I am mostly gonna be on the Chicago side, but I like both of them. Yeah, everybody, listen. Shh, don't tell anybody. Right? <laughs> don't tell anybody. This is this is this is this. If, if it's slate locked in five minutes, this is what I would be doing. Um, I would play Chicago. I would play both sides. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously, I'm not playing the pitchers. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess moving on, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I guess if, I guess to say a. A few specific plays. I mean, yeah, okay. um, I guess Hap, Contreras, Wisdom. Contreras is crazy expensive. Um, we'll see if they put the other catcher right back in today. Well, uh, when they do that, I I, I love it. Um, uh, Ortega. I mean, there, there's there, basically one through six for the Cubs. Actually, you know what? One through s- all of the Cubs, except for one through eight, actually, of the Cubs is where I'm at right now. And I think that it's uh, it's the lefties mostly for me for for Baltimore. Um, uh, which is really just, uh, I guess you're really just talking about Mullins and Odor then, uh, and, oh, and Rushman. Um, I, I like this game a lot. So I'm very high on this one. This would go up there with the Yankees in Toronto for me, but I think that the Cubs may, may end up being one of my teams by the end of the day. Um, if, there, if there was a need 
to really pay up for hitting um, as we go into this next game. I, I would have some interest in Glenn Otto here. Um, he's only 5,700 and he's against Oakland and, and he is going to, sh- he's showing up as a pretty good freaking point per dollar play. If that means anything. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know. I just don't know if I'm going to need it. Um, that that's, that's my comment on a lot of these cheapos sometimes, by the way, what happened with the, um, with the cheapos yesterday, the, um, fellow uh, guy hit, hit hard in the first inning, okay. second inning. Okay. Um, um, both of them hit Howard also, or just the, 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 the Howard uh, didn't, didn't put up any points. I think he had like one or two strikeouts. I, I don't know what he ended up with, but he did. He okay. wasn't doing very well. He we got up to a decent start, well, three innings and no runs. And then he, like, he had no strikeouts either. Okay. Um, and then he gave a couple runs. You like Otto? You like Texas? You like anything I think, here? I think if we're going to make an argument for Otto, we should probably make an argument for Caprillion. I, I, I really, so. Caprillion has a bigger leash, has had Flash actually more upside. Now, it's obviously you don't get to face the A's, which is part of why you want to play Otto. But I think both these guys are sh- sort of long shotty plays that I don't mind. Uh, I, I'm not like, I, I don't, I'm certainly not prioritizing them, but if I want to build one lineup with a, with a weird, uh, you know, double spend down or something. Both of these guys will be on that short list of, of my double spend downs, but I don't, I don't know if I'm going to need to do it today, to be honest with you. M- maybe you do if you want to play some of these other expensive stacks, but uh, then we're going to get into the crazy one coming up in a minute, but, uh, um, or yeah, the Colorado game coming up in just a few games, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I think Caprillion, and I also think that, again, uh, it's not as high on my list, but I definitely don't mind the Rangers uh, on on the other side of that argument. I also think you're getting some really cheap at cheap at cheap hitters from uh, Oakland in Machin. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. Um, if Pinder's back in the lineup at a home run last night, Seth Brown on FanDuel. All these guys are fine. Um, not not a priority for me this whole game, but I could see myself with pieces of it by the end of the day. Um, what, what do you think about this next game? This next game went off as kind of chalk um, yesterday, but by the way, I'm not sure Seas is pitching anymore. That's going to probably change. Oh, is game. that right? I don't know if who, I, I don't know who's pitching that early game. And this is what happened. The problem with doing it in the morning is that I just saw that his projection was removed on a couple sites. So oh, okay. So that 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 might end up making Strider. Strider might end up going from a projected 10 percent owned to like 40 percent owned in no time. Oh, we still have to get to the, the Garcia too. Yeah, absolutely. No, sorry, I, I jumped the gun a little bit, but. Um, what were you going to say, Sheets? I'm sorry. What were you saying about Detroit and Casey? Um, yeah, I was going to say that yesterday this thing went off as chalk. Um, well, I don't without, know without, chalk. without home runs, by the way, as I, as I said, they weren't hitting home runs out there because that, 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 that wind was blowing in and it's still blowing in a little bit, but not, not like it was. Sorry. Yeah, I, and, and I think that, um, I don't know, I mean, is Bubik a bad play at 5,900? If you want to double spend down, you know, you're talking about Caprillion, Otto, and Bubich, and I think they're all pretty close. Uh, it's, it's the Tigers. You can always play someone cheap against the Tigers. Right. And for what it's worth on the K prop side of things, I do think that kind of stuff can sometimes slant things a little bit for me. Uh, I think you're probably going to see what four and a half for each of the four and a half for Bubich. That's reasonable at 5,900. Um, yeah. Both Caprillion and, uh, or Otto, Otto's at four and a half, also Caprillion at three and a half. Um, yeah, I think it, I think he's in play. And Aside from that, I really don't. I really don't have much here. Yeah, I mean, Bo Bo Brisky was was awesome. He had a, a no hitter going in the last game for a while, um, but I'm I'm not gonna not gonna go for that. I don't think I really want to play these stacks either. And I think people are becoming like the, the Royals, and maybe for good reason. But people are like the Royals are always a team that I've noticed is always over owned. Actually, um, if Michael Taylor is batting at leadoff again at two point three, it's hard not to have some interest, especially right. the deep side too. Um, ben Attendi, Bobby Witt, and Melendez, that top four all makes sense as guys I would like to use. Does it make sense as a stack that can win you a tournament? I don't know about that. Um, but I, you know, and then you've got Pascantino and, and Dozier both cheap as well. Uh, I could see, I could see getting to a, a KC stack. I also don't believe in Pittsburgh's uh, Detroit's bullpen is as good as it was at the start of the year. Um, also Riley green on the other side, there's just a lot of pieces in this game. I just don't think I'm prioritizing it as a as a stack and i also don't think i'm prioritizing either pitcher either but i do think bubich might be the best of the of the guys we talked about for upside if we're going to try and spend down so san diego colorado uh you know uh again is, is rating to be the, the top place the san diego side and um we I mean, we used to think gomber wasn't bad but he, he he might actually stink you know i don't know um 
I mean, he's got to pitch in Colorado all the time, too. It's not. I get it. Um, but you know, he should throw up like one good game from time to time, no? I mean, I'm, well, I, I've never said about him as an actual play. What I say is that he does the same thing every time. He usually goes out there and gives up three runs, five right. innings. Um, and, and that's fine. It's just usually he's there's such heavy chalk against him that I'm always yeah. trying to find a reason not to play it. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so I don't know. So, so, so same, same speech as yesterday. I mean, San Diego rates to be the best play, but they, they have a lot more competition um, today than they did yesterday. And it turns out that it, it didn't matter anyway, but they, they really didn't do much until the last, last inning or two, I guess. Um, but yeah. um, uh, if they end up even remotely as popular as they were yesterday, I think that they're a pretty, pretty easy fade just because there's that much more competition below them. And just, for just this number, just this sheer volume of teams that they they're competing with, you know. Um, but they do rate to be the best play. Um, I'm not particularly interested in the Colorado side actually um, uh, today. Um, I'm not going to play Clevenger, but I'll probably end up, you know, probably being end up being under on on both sides again. I think I'll be underweight on both sides um, today. I I, I have. I don't think Gomber is quite as bad as he gets credit for. I don't think San Diego's, I mean, look, they finally scored six runs last night in Colorado and in what felt like an outburst, an outburst for them late in yeah. the game. And they, they, they have scored, you know, six runs or less in like what, 21 out of 22 games or something. And most of those are like two and three run performances. So to, to see them as massive chalk. Now the problem is you have the, 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 again, the pricing is just, just wonky. Like, I mean, Rooker is a minimum. He's, you know, uh, totally viable kim is as you know a shortstop spot at, at 2900 leading off probably void is too cheap um nola's 28 it's just they're so cheap like even if you're not using them they're the the padres are the value i think um that that's what i have them as i have them as a value like complimentary stack i don't think that they're a team that i want to play five guys from tonight uh, i just think that would be a bad bad dfs play in general especially at the ownership that they should receive now, there's a chance they end up not being owned uh, as much because people are going to see, I don't know, it's just, it's a little, there's some other good stacks out there. They, they, the only thing, I don't know, they're going to be somewhere in between because they, they are so cheap. It's hard not to, it's hard to imagine people not playing them, but there are a lot of pinch hit risk guys there. You know, Kim, Rooker, um, you could even see Nola in certain situations potentially out of there if, if, if he even starts. We don't know if it's going to be him or Alfaro anyway. Um, I could see there that, you know, there being a few spots here that you only get two at bats out of a hitter and that's obviously not what you want. So, um, and I, I, like you, I have no interest in Colorado. And if I was, if it was like the a hundred dollar tournament for a hundred K for first, or if I was playing this just just one lottery tournament on FanDuel, I would probably consider throwing Clevenger into one. He's 7,400 on FanDuel, FanDuel specifically. He is probably going to go six innings. This is one of the worst teams in baseball against right-handed pitching. Now they're much better at home, obviously, but Clevenger's got stuff, man. He's, this is a guy who's, who's very good. Um, and he's, he's worked himself back into his pitch count back up. I'm not going to do this on, on DK. And this is a, a do at your own risk. And only if your rest of your lineup is chalk and in the lottery kind of a thing. But I, I do like Clevenger a little bit uh, here, but I'm, I'm probably not going to, I'm not going to certainly not playing him on DraftKings. I just wanted to throw him out there for FanDuel. All right. Uh, what are your thoughts on Garcia in this next one with Houston? I'd rather not play him. Um, uh, I just, uh, I'd rather play other guys um, at, at, at that price. I mean, I, I'd just probably make sure to play Cole. Um, and the fact that Ceases might not play, um, you know, obviously it bumps Garcia up, but I, I think I'd just rather play Strider. You know, I don't know. I, I just, uh, may, maybe I'm just, I must be deluded, but I just don't regard Garcia as like that type of, you know, of ceiling dude, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. uh, Hey, and I'm afraid of Mike Trout. I'm afraid of Otani. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I just, I just, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't do it for me as, as, as a 10, one guy, but, uh, I'll be willing, I'll be willing to listen. Um, and the other side, I'm, uh, I'm out, <laughs> I'm out of Syndergaard. I'm just out. Um, I, I don't know what the weather's going to be like in, in LA. Um, is, is Houston the worst play in the world? Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe they are. Uh, if you have to think about that, but uh, I'm probably going to be probably under on, Lu I'm definitely going to be under on Luis Garcia. And the one thing I might screw up, I might, I might 
I might end up forcing Houston for no reason. That's good. I'm already projecting my bad, my, 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 my badness. So maybe I could talk myself out of it. So what I'm really supposed to do is just avoid it. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with Houston. Um, I don't think Alvarez is going to be in the lineup, which gives them a big knockdown. Ooh, that's not significantly good. their best hitter yeah. by a long ways. Um, and Syndergaard has been a lot better. Um, he's changed his pitching style. He's throwing yeah. all these sliders now, not throwing the fastball as much. Um, and he's been solid. I, I don't think I'm going to play him, but it's just throwing him out there with no Alvarez in there. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world. I didn't, I'm totally just all over the place on what to do with Garcia. I could, I think he's got a high enough ceiling where I'm definitely interested. I'm curious where the ownership ends up on him. I don't think it's going to be especially high. Um, I think I like the matchup against the angels because once you get past those top four, it's just like literally five guys who, you know, arguably are not major league level hitters, maybe four guys, I guess if I was being really fair, but yeah, Regifo VR and Stefanik Marsh. Um, yeah, I, I have, I have some interest in Garcia, but I'm not overwhelmingly excited and I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do anything with the hitting in this game, but I wouldn't mind if you ended up with a one-off of Tucker or a one-off of Altuve or something like that. I just personally am not prioritizing it. Well, if you didn't like any of all of that, <laughs> um, in, in a, in a hundred game slate, if people forget to play the hundredth game, um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in there. I, 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 uh, I like San Francisco in the spot against Keiko and I know he's got tricks and all this stuff. And every time people try to go against Keiko, he throws his sinkers and everybody just, just gets frustrated. But I don't know if you're looking for teams to look, looking for teams to, to take aside from uh, San Diego. I mean, I mean, I, I'm in, you know, uh, I, I like that. And boy, oh boy, I really don't want a game log. Watch this because when you pull up Logan Webb, you look at his strikeouts. When I look at this, like, like look at this strikeout trend. Like, this is like so brutal. Um, yeah. But he pitches a hundred thousand pitches a game. Um, an awesome real life pitcher. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nine ninety five hundred is tough though. That's like a tough price for him. Um, so I don't know. I I kind I kind of want to play San Francisco as for hitting, and I'll you know then I can complain when everybody hits the double plays uh, against Keiko. But I think I'm going to take a shot. Um, and then um, as a matter of fact, they've got to be owned. Everybody always play, listen. People play against Merrill Kelly. They play against Eric Fetty. They play against Dallas Keiko, which is guy and Martin Perez back from the day. You know what I mean? Like which is guys people play against. I think I think San Francisco is probably going to get played here, but uh, I, I might end up being one of them. Yeah, um, <laughs> Keiko pitched really well his last time out. Hasn't really had that kind of blow up -y, He had the one game in Colorado. That's, you know, forgivable. Um, uh, I, yeah, it's 59 degrees in San Francisco. It's You have the guys you want to play. All of them have pinch hit risk except for probably Flores. Oh. So, like Darren Ruff, I mean – they're, they'll, they'll pinch hit all-stars. They don't care. Jock Peterson, it's, you know, Montefiore <laughs> runs this year and he pinch hit, they pinch hit for him in the eighth inning last night when a lefty came in. And then when, 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 the, if they bring a righty in for Arizona, they're going to all of a sudden Austin Slater becomes Jock Peterson. Yeah. Um, Darren Ruff becomes Brandon belt or whatever, whoever else they want to put out there. Um, on a, 15, on a 15 game slate. That's, that's, yeah, that's a touch tough. That's why they're so hard to play all the time. They yeah. just almost everybody on their team is a pinch hit risk. And depending right. on how the lineup comes out and the lineups tend to come out after lock, which tends to keep them lower on. Right. I think Flores and Slater will both be popular. I like Flores um, and I don't mind a mini stack, but I, I can't get to more than a mini stack for the okay. Giants just because of the pinch hit risk is it's too, too prominent for me. For what, what about Logan Webb? I like him. Uh, I don't like, I like him as a pitcher in real life. I think yeah. it's a very natural, just very easy. You play Cole and Strider are the, are the natural yeah. guys I'm going to try to get to. Um, but Logan Webb, you know. He could be the, he could, Logan Webb could be like the Max Freed of tonight's slate. I guess. Exactly. Max yeah. Freed and or the formerly known as Walker Bueller. Um, that is correct. <laughs> that's, that's what I see in this one. But yeah, I mean, I, I do like, I, I do think Webb is on the list because there's just not enough, you know, really elite pitching options. I mean, who are we looking at here? Like, yeah. It's it's it, I'm trying to find other pitchers, but Garrett Cole is going to end up being crazy. Like I mean, he's going to be like seventy five percent. Is this confirmed that Cease is out? Um, n I mean, no, I don't. Nothing's confirmed with okay. the doubleheader because it hasn't started yet, so I don't okay. know what's happening. Uh, I just noticed that a couple of sites removed his projection. Okay, but yeah, if Cease if Cease is in, then you could argue Cease Strider. 
I do think Logan Webb is going to get ownership too. Um, and then I think Garcia ends up the lowest owned, which might make him an interesting play against the yeah. Angels, who sometimes just don't hit at all. <laughs> yeah. like, and uh, and I, I may even go back to my Josiah Gray or, or Jose Barrios just because I, I think that like I, I want the upside somewhere. And I, I just I just don't see a huge difference between those guys like you're playing the high strikeout guys who are volatile versus Logan Webb, who's very safe to like get through six innings. But like if he does it with two strikeouts, I have no interest in that. And whereas Josiah Gray, if he gets through six innings, he's going to have like eight or nine strikeouts probably. Um, or maybe not. That's overdoing it a little bit, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, I think it's going to be very heavily focused on Cole Webb sees Strider, but I think Strider is going to end up being clearly the number two by the time people start getting their heads together. Because right now I've got Strider as the fourth highest owned, and I think he's probably going to end up as the second highest owned pitcher. All right. Um, Sheets, what else do we, anything else we saw? I, I've got, I guess, prioritizing. I, I've got the Yankees, Toronto, Chicago, Baltimore game as, as my priorities, using some of the San Diego value, along with maybe a Machado to get like a three-man, um, and then maybe mixing in the Dodgers. That's where I'm at. How about you? I would include uh, Minnesota in all those, in that, in that, in that pile. Um, and we have to wait and see who's pitching to see about the cease play. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cole is going to be a, uh, a very difficult, uh, very difficult fade. So cue the cue the Joey Votto three one homer in the first inning, <laughs> uh, cool. and, and where Cole will still get forty fantasy points after that. Right, so. you ended up striking out ten in the next seven innings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so I guess a couple of sort of announcements. So um, I don't think I'm going to. I, I've been saying this, but I've been able to do it. I, I don't think I'm going to be live today with, with Bobby, but, and, and, and as for tomorrow, um, bear with us on Wednesdays for like a little bit. Um, see, it seems as though that neither of us are around. I just happen to have not been here around last Wednesday. Cause I had the, um, the tournament and yep. tomorrow I have that, I have the thing I'm doing, but usually like on days where Bobby is, is, you know, has to do stuff. I'll usually be able to pick up the Wednesday slack. Um, but just tomorrow I'm going to be kind of out. Uh, cause we're doing that sports betting thing. Um, yep. so, um, uh, I'll probably try to put an early set of projections up tomorrow and probably not going to be able to do anything after that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to, by the time you hear this, it'll be too late, but we're going to probably do our, our us, our British open, uh, video now. Yep. So that at yep. least we get this out there. Yeah. And, and just to that point, um, I, I, I will be around in the morning. I think there should be a decent morning slate tomorrow. And, oh, cool. Uh, so I'll do that. And I'll touch on the main slate. So I, I can do that at live, probably 11 AM Eastern tomorrow. And, that's where uh, where I'm gonna what I'm gonna do before I before I have to go spend the afternoon uh, with my kids. Nice. All right, so good luck to everybody today. I'll see you guys live at six. Hopefully, we'll see sheets. If not, it'll be me, and we'll uh, hopefully make some money. Good luck to everybody.